I'm Sarah Canny, and this is my live Instagram show, Showing Up, Courageous Conversations with Women Who Are Following Their Heart. Hi, friends. I hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Um, And even if you're not having a fantastic Wednesday, I hope that something in your day brightens up a little bit and you're able to find um, gratitude in the midst of whatever's going on. So even if it's not a fantastic day, that's okay. Um, My name is Sarah Canny and I am author of the blog runfargirl.com. I am also the founder and host of the Women's Running Retreat, Rise Run Retreat, which is coming up Our registration for Rise Run Retreat closes in a month, and we have a limited number of spots available. I'm really excited about this four-day weekend that I've been planning and putting together. I'm excited to welcome our guest speakers, which include pro ultra runner Sally McRae, confidence coach Kristen Shefshunis, and running coach, my running coach, and injury prevention specialist, Kim Nadow. They will all be there for four days in Woodstock, Vermont. It's going to be an amazing weekend. And if you want more information, you can either direct message me or you can head to riserunretreat.com and that will fill you in on everything that's going on there. So this is my Instagram live show, which isn't so much a show as it is a showing up where I share conversations with women who are stepping out into their dreams, pursuing what's in their heart, and finding a way through some of the setbacks and the disappointments and the failures to really stick to it and show up and make their dreams work. So I'm really excited um, to have on today Erica Sarah from Erica Sarah Designs. Um, She is a jewelry designer, makes custom jewelry with inspirational sayings and mantras. I'm actually wearing one of her pieces now, which I um, had her design. It says, embrace the hill on one side, and then on the other side, it says, I will lift my eyes to the hills. So she just makes beautiful pieces that um, are inspiring to so many people. Um, And she has a really neat story. And so I'm really excited to bring her on today and chat with her about. And we're back. <laughs> so this is sort of like running your own business, right? Like you just go with it. Like point. You just have to be really, really persistent. <laughs> okay. So the good news is that this entire time I have not been been able to see you, and now I can actually see you. Oh. Maybe we fixed it. <laughs> and I'm really sorry, everyone, if this is my fault or my Wi-Fi's fault, because you know, who knows? Okay, well, we'll yeah. move. So, um, yeah. So anyway, what um, kind of moving um, forward? What? How do you see your business growing, or where do you where do you want to take Erica Sarah Designs? <sighs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, it, it's just, it's sort of crazy. Like I said, things just happen organically, but business is, is big and it's good. And there are days where I can't, I can't handle it myself. Like, um, you know, a few years ago, someone came to me and he had just inherited a lot of money and he came and he's like, you know, I want to, inha- I want to invest money in your business and I want to like grow it to be this like multi-million dollar business. And I was like, Oh no, hell no, we're not doing that. Like, that's not me. That's not where I want to go. Um, but as things grow, I mean, that's still not where I want to go, but like, it'd be nice to go somewhere in between. Like, yeah. um, you know, like I, I physically can't handle everything anymore myself, but yet it's still my name. My, I'm sorry. You can make each piece, right? Your hand, you're in there making each piece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, if there's anyone watching who didn't know that you made handmade each piece, like I feel yeah. like important and really special. Like, where are you going to get a handmade piece these days? Yeah, it's funny. Like someone, I remember one time sent me an email and they were like, you know, this isn't what I, whatever. And I don't remember this. I was like, it's handmade. Like, I don't know what you expected. Like if, you know, like if you wanted it, like just, I don't know. Anyway, um, that's a whole different story for a different day. But so right now, actually, I just booked a ticket to New York. Um, there's a big jewelry expo this weekend. And um, 
I'm looking right now for someone to just help me. Um, like I recently spoke to someone and, and he was like, you know, yeah, I can help you, but I'll only do the finished pieces. So like, if you want to engrave, like I've got to be engraving for you. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I still want to touch every single piece of my jewelry. I still want to be doing the engraving and all that. But I, you know, right now, like the discs, like I polish each one myself and clean it. And then you know, it's yeah. a lot. Like my fingers are raw all the time. Like maybe I can find someone like that at least does my discs for me. You know, so like I can still do the engraving and all that stuff. Um, there's a bunch of pe like pieces of necklaces that like I still maybe I might do all the cutting out of the run pieces, but like maybe they'll assemble them for me because I physically can't do it myself. And I don't want to like cut down, you know, I don't want to like be like, okay, you know, right now for holiday, like I try to, you know, any holiday or Valentine's Day, I try to let orders be open as long as they possibly can. And I'm working around the clock to film them. And there's going to be a point where like, I physically can't do it and get to you on time. So, um, so yeah, so I have a New York book for this weekend and I'm hoping to find someone that can just help me. Um, I'm going to probably narrow down my assignment just a bit, um, focus on a few things more, um, and just try to keep plowing ahead. And I think once, also once my kids are a little older, it'll be a lot easier managing it all, you know, yeah. so. So let's yeah. talk about that because, like being a mom and an entrepreneur and a business owner and also being so in your business, that's a lot to handle. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> how do you, how do you kind of figure out that work life balance? Like what does that look like for you? So um, I'm very lucky to have an amazing husband. He hears me right now. So I have to say that. No, I'm kidding. He's, he's awesome. Hi, Robert. Um, and so we have a really interesting um, setup. My husband also works from home. He left his job at Runner's World, I guess, last March. Um, and we picked up and moved to North Carolina. And we decided he was going to do his own business. I was going to do my own business and both work from home. And so we have this crazy schedule where um, we all have breakfast together as a family. And then at 8 o'clock, one of us goes to work and the other runs with the kids. And then we swap at like 12 or 1. Nice. So it's cool. So also now both kids go to school three days a week. So those days are a little different, but one of us is with the kids in the morning or the afternoon, that, that kind of thing. Um, so that makes it a little easier. And then the, the um, agreement is that when we're working, we're working. So even though mommy is in her studio in the house, like no one's allowed in that studio, unless it's like the house is on fire, there's an actual emergency, like no one's coming in. Um, and, and Robert too. And, and so if he's working, like we're not coming in and, you know, bugging him and things like that. So that's number one. And then there's a lot of like 4 a.m. wake ups and nine o'clock to 12, you know, midnight work sessions. And um, we made a promise not to, we have, so we have meals together as many as possible, always breakfast, almost always dinner and sometimes lunch um, and no phones or any of that at the table. Um, and then weekends, unless like there's a big deadline looming, no work. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I feel it's, like it's important because my husband own, owns his own business too. He doesn't work from home, but, um, having really kind of clear boundaries around family time, work time. And I'm honestly like the worst because I will just like let work bleed into family time because I've just. I like to work, <laughs> you know, like, I, yeah, it's, some, the working comes more easily to me than the being present and connecting, which can be a challenge. So it's, it's a bit that those clear boundaries and it's like meals together. I think that's so important. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, there was a point I can admit where things were getting out of control and my daughter, she's now 18 months and I think she was maybe 14 months at the time. She literally would take my phone when I had it and throw it across the room. And I'm like, okay, wake up call. Hold on. Yeah. Like mom is on her phone too much, you know, like, and you know, there are times that someone will send me a DM via Instagram and I don't get to it until the next day or they send it to me and they send me another one 24 hours later because I still haven't gotten to it. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like I I'm doing the best I can. And you know, this is why for my business, I quote up to 10 business days because there are going to be days where my kids need me more than I you know, my kids need me or someone's sick or that's it. Like I, you have to put it on hold and it's really hard as someone who's always worked. I mean, like I literally started working, when I was 12 years old and it's always been yeah. a big thing for me. Um, the transition to motherhood was really hard and there are days where it still continues to be, it feel like impossible. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, you know, one day I was having a really tough moment and Robert's like, this is what you wanted. Like you wanted children for a very long time. You have them like work, like you had your work and you can still have your work, but like you have your kids, like enjoy them. And I was like, you know, light bulb, like I got my kids. Like it's true. Like I feel like, and yours are young, like, and Mm -hmm. you know, are three, six and nine. And I feel like once the youngest potty trained I yeah think that was a game changer like in terms of my like feeling of capacity increased like tenfold because it's like okay I'm not changing diapers or I'm not shuttling someone to and from the potty like trying to like manage the, <laughs> the mess yeah. accidents and so it's it's a tough like juggling act and I feel like yeah it's like you want both like you want the you want to be there for your kids and you want to also grow this thing that you're passionate about it's it's definitely like there's an ebb and flow to it and it's not always balanced like it's not always equal no it's definitely i mean the whole balancing i'm not sure there is balance it's really like there are days where it's really really nicely balanced but most of the time it's one or the other and like i said luckily i'm married to a guy who is like as hands-on as it gets with the house and the kids and you know he he like has a lot a lot of work to do too and whenever he takes on a new project he even says like okay am i prepared to give up more time with the kids because that's what's really important right now this is when we get to spend time with the kids so it's you know yeah so yeah I'm just like once that like we reached that tipping point with the potty training i started to think of it in terms of think of the kids in terms of like how far away are they from 18, (laughs) you know? And so now it's like, Oh my gosh, time is like really speeding up. It is. Of course, then there's days where it's like, Oh my God, (laughs) you know, like yesterday, no, no, not yesterday, two days ago. I was like, Oh my God, how like at times only two hours away. and It is a whole two hours away. I'm not sure I could do this. (sighs) It was, Oh, it's tough. I, I just read an article in the New York times, um, about this very topic of women, um, highly educated women entering the, you know, careers and then, um, sort of pulling back and realizing like having it all the career and motherhood is like far more challenging than the ex. Oh no. Sorry. Your I see you, but you're breaking up again. I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Oh. oh. Okay, I'm gonna hang up and reconnect. Hold on. I can't hear you now. Oh my gosh, what's going on? I feel so bad. Can you hear? I can't hear you.
Okay. Can you hear me? I don't. So, hi. I can't hear you at all. I feel horrible. I can hear me, but not you. And I'm seeing some people comment that they can hear and some people that can't. So, I don't know what to do. Dumb witness can hear one of us. I'm not sure which. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, are we, I guess, okay, we'll wrap it up. I'm reading your lips. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm reading lips, and I saw. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> so, all right. So we're gonna try one more time. Can you guys hear me? If you can hear me, let me know. If you can't hear me, you can also leave a comment to let me know that you can't hear me. Or if you can hear me, that would be fantastic. Um, anyway, just wanted to quickly thank our sponsor, Triggerpin, for um, sponsoring this episode. Triggerpin is the foam roller that I use primarily. It is made in the USA by a small company here in New Hampshire. Um, tpinmuscletherapy.com is where you can check them out. And if you're interested in purchasing one of their rollers, you can use code RUNFAR and that gets you 10% off. That's R-U-N-F-A-R, -R, all caps. So thank you so much for joining me today um, and bearing with us um, while we dealt with some technical difficulties. You can find Erica Sarah at um, ericasarah.com. You can see all of her beautiful jewelry there on her website. And then if you want to follow her on Instagram, you can go to at Erica Sarah and follow along there. Also, next week, I'll have my next guest on, Jessica Hofheimer. Jessica is the author of the blog, Pace of Me, and she has recently been sharing her art with the running community, and she has been creating beautiful drawings of people's race photos. And so I'm gonna have her on and chat about what it's like to take something that's your hobby and put it out there in the world and step out into something that's a little bit scary. So thanks again to Erica for coming on today. Thank you guys for showing up and of course for bearing with us with these technical difficulties. Hopefully by next week we'll have all the kinks worked out and if you want to view the full episode without all of the interruptions, that will be up on my blog and I will put the link to get access to those full episodes in my profile. So hope you guys have a fantastic week. Thanks again for being here with me and we'll see you next week. <laughs>